Transform your boring shot into a dynamic masterpiece using generative fill for video. I'll show you how. Okay, to start out, we have this simple slider shot of a man on a laptop in his living room sitting on his couch. Let's have some fun with it. First, I'm gonna bring a clean frame into Photoshop. So I'll go to Composition, Save Frame As, File, hit Render. All right, now I'm in Photoshop. Now first, I'm gonna duplicate my layer and keep a clean one on the bottom. I'm gonna hide it, and here I'm gonna create a clean plate with my couch, subject, and carpet, removing all the other objects. So I'm gonna use my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just gonna delete each one of these objects trying to maintain roughly as much as my background and floor as possible so the generative fill knows what my scene has to look like. I also want to remove my character for now, so I'll delete him too. But once it looks something like this, I could use my magic wand tool and select my alpha channels and just hit generate. This will fill in for the most part and might add some objects based on the shadows and lighting, but with a few prompts, it'll look like this. Okay, so I'm gonna hide this layer for now. This is my clean plate. Now I'm gonna go back and select each of my objects using the object selection tool. So I'll select an object and I'll click select and mask, making sure my selection is clean. I can adjust it using the parameters on the left if I need to. And once it's done, I'm gonna select output to new layer. So now it's on its own layer. Now let's select an object that's partially cut off by another object like this plant, for example. The couch is blocking the other half of the plant. So I'm gonna isolate it using that same process. And once it's isolated, I'm gonna reveal my clean plate layer, and I'm gonna select the missing part of my plant, the invisible part. And I can add a prompt to make it a little bit more specific, like indoor potted plant. And it should generate it nicely based on the other criteria it has. Then I can bring it back to select and mask, and I can remove the excess background. Once I get all these objects generated and isolated on their own layers like this, I could bring this comp back into After Effects. Okay, so now I'm importing my PSD as a composition in After Effects. I'm gonna bring this PSD comp into my main comp here. Then jumping back into that sub comp, I'm gonna start my animation on my objects. So most of these objects, it's a simple position adjustment or scale adjustment with an ease in and an ease out. And for other objects like this lamp, to add a little bit more realism, I added a bit of a tip over effect using a rotation parameter. And you just have to make sure that the anchor point is at the bottom of the lamp. And just making sure that I enable motion blur on all these objects. For objects like this chair, for example, I just adjusted the scale and position. You could also do this as a 3D layer, but I decided against it since all my other layers are 2D. Once I have my timing right on all my animations, I can go back into my main comp and track the slider camera movement for my PSD layers. And I'll use the 3D camera tracker on this. Once it's done analyzing, I'll find a spot near the end of the couch and I'll create a new null and camera. Grab my PSD layer and I'll make it a 3D layer and I'll parent it to the null. So it'll jump a bit after you parent it, but I'm gonna make some quick adjustments. Lastly, I'm gonna duplicate my tracker layer. I'm gonna bring it above my PSD layer and I'm gonna just mask out my subject. I'm gonna feather the mask a little bit, adjust my anchor point, and here's my final result. 